Hi everyone, David Maley here, and today I'm going to take you through a quick EDA exploratory data analysis process that's very useful in data analytics and data science. It's nothing hard or arduous, it's very simple, it's stuff we use every day. So this uses Python 3, and we're using the selfie related injuries data set, which has about 193 rows or so of data in it. And it's kind of interesting about people that died taking selfies over like dams and uh, uh, tall buildings and, and, and uh, safaris and stuff like that and didn't take their safety into consideration or made a uh, mistake. Anyway, um, so we're going to start off here. We're going to pull in the data and we've got location A. I'm putting it into location A, which is like a variable. And then underneath this, I'm importing the pandas as PD. And then we're going to create this right here. I'm going to use PD pandas.read CSV of that location A. And I want to see the head or the top four, first four rows. And this shows my data in a nice, clear, concise way to look at it. I know I've got type, which I'm gonna be interested in. Later you'll see that. And I've got description. I wanna see exactly what happened, country, injuries, and date. So now I wanna go and look at this. I wanna, I, you know, a lot of times you wanna identify nulls because nulls cause problems later on when you're running processes. So I'm gonna show you how we identify it. So I'm gonna identify the nulls as to how many there are or if there are any and then I want to see where they are so this first set of code right here shows me df data frame dot is null sum sum and print the null values null count this gives me null values that's just a text uh, definition here and then I've got the null count which is two so it tells me I've gotten two nulls I don't know where they are in this 193 rows and you don't even know if it's 193 rows I'm just telling you that um, now, where are the nulls for correct purposes? So I use this df nulls equals df dot is null. So there's no sum sum on this one. And print df nulls. If you don't hit print df nulls, you just have this variable that contains the information here, but it doesn't uh, display it. So you got to put print df nulls at the bottom, just like you did above. And what happens? It tells me, oh, right here, row 192 is true, true. That means that is where the null is. Um, I don't have, and there's two of them, one, two. They're in that row, so there's nowhere else. I don't have nulls anywhere else because you can see it's false everywhere else. And then it tells me at the bottom of that I have 193 rows. That's where I get that from from earlier and five columns of data. Then I go down below here and I'm going to go and look at, again, if I didn't do that, I just wanted to identify how many rows of data I have here. I just hit print number of rows. So it looks pretty. I don't have to. I can just get the number 193 and put len, which is like length of the data frame. Next, I want to know um, how many unique values are involved in that type column. Remember I told you about that column earlier about how people died, transport, electrocution, whatever. We'll only see two here, right? But there's more than that. So if I run this, print number of unique values in column type, so I know what column I'm using here, and then I've got len.pd for panda, unique data frame of type, that will give me eight. It tells me I know I have eight, but what are they? So next, I want to see what they are. Uniques equals the set. I want the whole set of that data frame type and then print that. That tells me I've got transport, fire, fall, firearms, or firearm, other animal, drowned, and electrocution. Okay, so that's what the different types of deaths were from selfie deaths. Next, I want to know, okay, well, that, that tells me what they are and what the different ones were, the unique ones were, but it doesn't tell me how many of each. So next, I'm going to use this. Occurrences equals DF for data frame type dot value counts value underscore counts and then print the occurrence i'm going to print this out and that gives me an order from highest to lowest by default of how these occurred fall drown fall was 75 lowest was fire one and even tells me the data type of integer 64 for that column i can also do this with the group by data frame dot or df dot group by type size this gives me the exact same data the difference is by default it's not in order the other one is. That's the only difference in value counts and group by and using them in that manner. Next, I want to go and look at it a little bit deeper. I want to see it visually. I don't just want to see the data. I like, you know, I mean, it's great that I know these numbers, but I'd like to see it in a nice, pretty bar chart or something like that that I can give to an executive or give to somebody else so I can look at quickly and identify some anomalies. So I'm going to import these three numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn as SNS. And then what I'm going to do, do is use this, where I'm going to use df counts equals df, type, value counts, reset the index. Next line is I'm going to go and actually look at the uh, figure. I'm going to create it. So I'm going to plot.figure, 
and this is the figure size. You can change that figure size. It doesn't have to be 20 comma 7. It just fit best for me on this screen, but you could use whatever you want. SNS bar plot, index and type. Um, and then you've got title is set to selfie deaths by type. And then you've got type and number for the uh, X label and Y label. Then when you go here, it's plot.show, because if you don't put that, obviously it's not going to show. And here is your nice little graph right there where it shows selfie deaths by type. You've got number, type, just like here, number, type. Selfie deaths by type right here is your title right there. And then it has them in order from highest to lowest. And it's very easy to see. So obviously fall is the worst. Remember we had 75 for that. And you can see them all with different colors for each. And it's kind of nice to look at. So it's a great quick way to visualize your data and see what anomalies are there. We've identified nulls. If we need to fix them or move them, you know, do anything with them or not, we know exactly where they are. Even if it's in a bigger data set, it doesn't matter. I'll tell you exactly what row or rows have the nulls above what we did. And then you have this nice representation. Now, obviously, if you had something with uh, 100,000 different types in it, this wouldn't have looked pretty and maybe something else would be necessary here or I could use a different column to visualize. I hope you found this helpful and informational. It's very simple. All of the code is right here for you to look at. I'll go back through it again real quick um, it, just to show you what the code is that we used. You can go and stop this, pause this at any time and look and uh, copy that code and you can change it and add in um, a different data set of whatever you want that you're using or working with. This is just the selfies data set, selfie death data set, which is publicly available on the internet. You can just look it up, selfie death data set in Google or something like that. Hope you found this interesting and informational. It's very nice to have to be able to quickly get through data, identify issues with it. Knowles are one of the biggest things that cause issues in automated processes. So it'd be nice to be able to identify stuff like that. And also to be able to quickly look and separate and differentiate you know, what are the unique values? How many of them are there? You know, how many of each occurred occurrences? Hope you found this inf interesting and informational. Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share, and check out all the other great videos on my channel. Thanks again, and have a great day.